Lions have great vision. The brightest sunshine won't blind them, and in low light, they can see six times better than humans. They can hear prey from a mile away. And their sense of smell is so keen, they can tell how recently the prey passed. Lions will take on prey more than twice their size. A full-grown zebra can weigh nearly half a ton. One kick from those hooves can break a lion's jaw. Lions are sprinters, not marathoners. They can hit 35 miles an hour, but only for a few seconds. So they team up, approaching their prey from different angles. Zebras learn to keep their distance, but one zebra is about to violate the first rule of the safari. Always stay with the group. The lion will go for the typical death blow, crushing the windpipe. while the team keeps their prey from getting away. Of all the world's cats, lions are the only social animal, especially at dinner time. After a kill is made, males always eat first, then the females. What's left goes to the cubs. Often not enough. Most will not survive into adulthood. This alpha male lion seems to have it made. Few animals would dare mess with such a powerful predator. He is master of a territory that includes prides of females and their cubs. The females will accept him as their mate and protector until another more powerful male pushes him off this throne. For this lion, it's just a matter of time. A pair of nomadic males has set their sights on his females. The only way for these male lions to mate is to conquer the dominant male's territory. If they succeed, they'll likely kill the cubs and other young males he may have sired. But this old general doesn't plan to surrender. This time, he vanquishes his rivals. But eventually, there will be more. For a lion king, there is no such thing as retirement. He must fight for his throne or be cast aside. And typically, his reign will last no more than two or three years. This lucky male has already found a female. We call him lucky because we have a cruel sense of irony. Using the small claws on his flippers, 
he has hooked himself to her shell. If he can get into the right position, he can mate with her. She doesn't make it easy. In fact, she ignores him. The same cannot be said for his competition. In order to take Lucky's place, this rival male has to get rid of him. He attacks Lucky in the only place he can really hurt him, his flippers. Turtles don't have teeth, but their beaks are sharp enough to bite through crab shells. Lucky can't fight off his rival without letting go. All he can do is endure. Could it get worse for Lucky? Oh, yeah. A second rival appears. They attack from the other side. Lucky is not feeling lucky. And it's about to get worse. A third rival appears. This is too much for the female. She tries to ditch these losers, but the rivals won't go away that easy. Lucky endures bite after bite. This has to end soon, right? Wrong. More and more males arrive, driven by hormones and unrealistic expectations. Somehow, Lucky holds on. But he's got another problem. Green sea turtles can hold their breath for a few hours if undisturbed. Under stress, that number plummets. The female heads for the surface, desperate for air. The males try to stop her. If they can't cut Lucky off the female, they'll cut off his air. Drowning a prospective mate isn't the best idea. But these males aren't the brightest of the bunch. The female finally escapes. Both take a welcome breath of fresh air. The rivals finally quit trying. Perhaps Lucky deserves his nickname. He's lucky enough just to be in one piece. Let's go inside one of the most remarkable, most fascinating, and well, most disgusting places on Earth. And we mean that in the best sense of the word. Let's go inside a termite nest, a factory ventilated by air shafts where termites produce more termites. We're in the queen's chamber, the heart of the nest. Imagine you're the queen. You're attended by millions of sterile worker termites who live to feed you, groom you, and carry your eggs away when you lay them. You aren't acting helpless because you think you need royal treatment. You are helpless. See, a termite queen's head is nearly as small as the rest of the termites in the colony, but she's rendered immobile by her four-inch throbbing, pulsating egg machine of an abdomen. How many eggs can this body produce? Take a guess. Would you say hundreds a day? Maybe, I don't know, a thousand? A high performance queen like this one can produce, well, let's do the math. 30,000 eggs in one day times 365 days a year. That's 10,950,000 eggs. 
times 15 years the life of a queen, this body will crank out 164,250,000 eggs in her lifetime. <laughs> no wonder she needs so many attendants. It's one of their jobs to carry all those eggs to cells where they hatch into fragile nymphs. These nymphs will grow up to be more workers whose job it is to continually build and repair the nest, supply it with food and water, and care for the queen. In this termite factory, the royal assembly line never shuts down. The hive is hungry. Some 30,000 honeybees need pollen. Now, a single jar of the honey you can buy in any store requires a million flower visits. Scouts disperse several miles in each direction, searching for untapped fields. This scout makes a promising find. Pollen sacs bulge from her legs, but she can't harvest all of it herself. She needs help. Lots of it. She spreads the news of her find by dancing. This waggle dance is based on a figure eight. The scout moves at an angle, waggles, reverses direction, and waggles some more. Her flower point presentation has to communicate three things. First, she moves at an angle. The angle indicates the direction of the flowers in relation to the sun. The hive's honeycombs are built vertically, so straight up means towards the sun, down means away from the sun, and so on. Second, distance. She waggles her abdomen rapidly. The more she waggles, the further the distance. Third, flower type. The pollen she collected provides a scent cue for the others to smell for. Her presentation is a success. Several sisters return with her to forage in the field. They, in turn, will bring back more pollen and spread the word until the hive is finally full.
to love.